The Zalanin, also known as the Endless, are an advanced sentient species of unknown origins that remained utterly undiscovered until after the fall of the Fauna Ecumene. During the closing years of the Fauna Flood War, the life worker rate led by the librarian went to exhaustive efforts to catalogue and preserve DNA and living specimens of every sentient species in the galaxy that would ultimately be destroyed by the firing of the Halo Array. This was done as part of a conservation measure, so that following the cleansing of life, the galaxy could be receded. In spite of these exhaustive efforts, the Zalanin were not discovered and thus not catalogued. It was thus all the more surprising then that following the firing of the Halo Array, whilst the reseeding process was actually underway, the Zalanin were discovered alive and well on their home planet, seemingly unaffected by the Halo's combined effects. The foreigners, realizing their survival jeopardized their intended plans for passing the mantle of responsibility to humanity, arranged a false flag parlay that resulted in the imprisonment of the entire species within Silex's stored deep within Zeta Halo, where they would remain for a hundred thousand years. The Zalanin remained... I can't do this. I, re I really can't do this. <clears throat> You know what's ridiculous? What's truly, really ridiculous is that the Endless, everything I've just summarized here in the opening of this video in less than two minutes, is pretty much all we know about the Endless. That really is basically it. Halo Infinite launched over, t over a year ago, a year and a half ago now. And generally speaking, when a new campaign launches, there's tons of new lore, there's tons of new things to explore, there's just ungodly quantities of lore. The, the, the whole reason campaigns exist is to expand the narrative. What did we get with Halo Infinite's campaign? It was based upon Zeta Halo, one of the most lore-ridden places in the galaxy, with huge historical ramifications for the foreigners, the flood, for humanity, and now the endless as well that, you know, seem to be a, a new prime mover for some reason. Factor into that the fact that the Halos have huge religious connotations for the Covenant, and obviously they're known to be weapons of mass destruction by the Banished. The, the Halos are huge prizes to be won by any species powerful enough to claim one. And Zeta Halo, chief amongst them, is by far one of the most mysterious, one of the most narratively rich Halos in existence. So you would think, when Halo Infinite launched, and it was confirmed that we were going to Zeta Halo, that the new lore that would be available to us would be ridiculously extensive. But it's not. What, what did Halo Infinite's campaign actually give us, narratively speaking? The Endless. That's pretty much it. And I just summarised at the start of this video, within two minutes, everything we now know about them as a consequence of the campaign. That's really it. Did we learn anything new about Zeta Halo? No. Did we learn anything new about Chief's particular story and narrative? Not really. Did we learn anything new about the Banished that we didn't already know? A couple of trinket pieces of information, but that's about it. Did the Flood make a big return? Nope. Did we learn anything of the San Shayum, the Prophet species, where they've gone since the end of the Human Covenant War? Nope. Did we learn any new deep information about the Foreigners? Nope. Anything about ancient humanity, considering the, the history that Zeta Halo has? Nope. We had an entire campaign that took six years to produce, and we learned nothing. Literally nothing. 
Halo Infinite was supposed to be somewhat of a soft reboot, so to speak, for the narrative. It didn't even do that very well. Don't get me wrong, the ideas and concepts behind the campaign, the whole sort of semi-open world aspect of it is very intriguing. The bare bones of it are very appealing, and in theory have a lot of potential. But what was done with it was basically nothing. I mean, think of it like this. Okay, so a story, generally speaking, goes somewhere. It has a plot that leads you to a logical conclusion. There's some, there's some sort of journey involved in the narrative. That's, that's just a given of storytelling. So in order for Halo Infinite to advance the plot in any great degree, it needs to take what we already knew before Halo Infinite and advance it somewhat towards the end of Halo Infinite. That's, that's storytelling, right? So before Halo Infinite, what did we know? Well, we knew from the very end of Halo 5 that Cortana, now leading the created, had already discovered Zeta Halo because we can hear her humming the piano piece from Debussy as she somewhat turns on, so to speak, Zeta Halo. We also know that humanity are in a bad way because we refused to bow and bend to Cortana's will, so the created have EMP'd human colonies, guardians have been lifting out of colonies across all of human controlled space, in fact also the covenant species space as well. So all in all, humanity are now on the back foot, we're no longer the powerhouses that we were in sort of Halo 4 moving over to Halo 5. We also know fully about the Banished. The Banished appeared first in Halo Wars 2 and were narratively really well fleshed out. In addition to that, we also have extensive lore on Zeta Halo in the Forerunner trilogy of books, so we already know a huge amount of information about just what potential and what things lurk beneath the surface of Zeta Halo. And again, in addition to that, we already know what Zeta Halo is like in the quote-unquote modern era because we already had the book Point of Light, for example, where large portions of that narrative happened on Zeta Halo. So really, the scene was already very well fleshed out, or it was already set. We already knew a huge amount of information about the potential settings of Halo Infinite before it even launched. So then Halo Infinite did launch, and the campaign began playing out. And when you weigh up how the campaign finishes and the kind of things we know at the end of the Halo Infinite campaign versus what we knew at the start of the Halo Infinite campaign from prior entries into the franchise, you discover that nothing happened. Like, nearly nothing happened. At the start of Halo Infinite, humanity were in a bad way. At the end of Halo Infinite, humanity are in a bad way. At the start, the Banished were a huge, palpable threat. At the end, the Banished were a huge, palpable threat. At the start, Zeta Halo was a mysterious, old Halo installation filled with lore and undiscovered mysteries. At the end, it was still filled with lore and undiscovered mysteries. Because we didn't discover any of them in the campaign. At the start, the Flood hadn't really re-emerged within the galaxy. At the end, the Flood hadn't really re-emerged in the galaxy. At the start, we didn't know a huge amount about what was going on with the Arbiter and the Swords of Sanghelios. At the end, we didn't really know what was going on with the Arbiter and the Swords of Sanghelios. At the start, we knew a decent amount about the Foreigners. At the end, we knew a decent amount about the Foreigners. The, the point I'm driving at here is that the things that we knew at the start of Halo Infinite and the things we then knew at the end of Halo Infinite are basically one thing. The Zalanin exist. Again, Halo Infinite was to be a soft reboot for the franchise. To somewhat reset the franchise back to kind of Halo CE kind of levels. And it, and it did that, yeah. We basically got a Halo CE anniversary anniversary. I mean, I somewhat say that in jest, but actually when you weigh it up, when you weigh the two campaigns together, they are basically the same game. I mean, the same game, but just named slightly differently and, and wrapped up in different names and colours. Basically, it's the same game. I mean, Halo CE, you arrive at a mysterious ring world, you fight for every inch of ground, you're up against an alien foe that's extremely aggressive and wants to kill all of humanity, 
and in desperate attempts to try to play for power and ground on this installation, you discover a hidden threat within the ring world and ultimately have to destroy that ring world in order to stop that threat from leaving the installation and getting into the rest of the galaxy. In Halo Infinite, you arrive on a mysterious ring world where you fight against alien aggressors who want to destroy all of humanity and in a desperate attempt for fighting for every inch of ground and to try to play for power positions around the ring, you discover an ancient hidden threat within the ring that is soon to be released. You see what I'm getting at here? In fact, strictly speaking, Halo Infinite is basically only half of Halo CE. Like, Halo CE up to sort of the release of the Flood. That's basically Halo Infinite. Actually, let's, let's do the legwork here. So, okay, let me think this through. So, Halo CE, you start on board a ship. The ship is being destroyed. And uh, you have to leave the ship. After that, you find yourself on the surface of the ring, where you then have to kind of rally the troops and, and, and build forces again because you're scattered and you need to regroup and, and get ready to mount a more powerful offensive against the alien aggressors that put you there in the first place. Halo CE, Captain Keys gets kidnapped by the Covenant and you have to go and get him. In Halo Infinite, they, Captain Lasky is missing, but they just decide not to even bother looking for him. Then eventually in Halo CE, you discover that there's this new threat, this flood threat deep within the ring that's going, that's been released and, and it's a huge threat. Halo Infinite, you've got the Zalanin, uh, this threat within the ring that's going to be released by the Banished. Uh, Basically, Halo Infinite is Halo CE levels Pillar of Autumn, Halo, the Silent Cartographer, and the first half of 343 Guilty Spark. Yep. Oh, and I, I suppose we should probably include the Truth and Reconciliation. It's just that Halo Infinite put the Truth and Reconciliation level at the start when you're aboard Warship Bracken, and you're not there looking for Lasky. So, yeah. That basically, the point I'm making, <laughs> to try to round this up, the point I'm making is that Halo Infinite really did nothing with the immense levels of lore that it had available to it. It had Zeta Halo at its disposal. It had ten proto-grave mines in containment within Zeta Halo. It had hundreds pushing a thousand years of occupation of ancient humanity. And there's bound to be evidence left over from that ancient human culture living on Zeta Halo. The Banished had the potential of being a very different kind of an enemy to fight despite being made of the same constituent races as the Covenant, but their ideologies are so fundamentally different that in theory it could be a much more compelling and interesting opponent to verse. But really they play like the Covenant. You fight them like the Covenant. There's there's real really no major differences in the mannerisms in which you go about taking them out. How they respond to the Master Chief. The created and, and Cortana could could have been a constant looming threat, like it was in the book Point of Light, where saying her name out loud too close to a communications node would almost beckon her, would almost summon her. You know, it's Make, make her a, a kind of omnipresent, predatory threat. Cortana somehow gets trapped on Zeta Halo, suddenly about faces in her decisions against humanity, completely turncoats, and suddenly the created are no longer a threat. Like I said, the only real new thing that was introduced in Halo Infinite were the Endless, and we know nothing about them. All we know is what I summarised at the start of this video, that they were found alive and well after the firing of the Halo Arrays, that the foreigners arranged a parlay false flag, imprisoned them, and they remained there right up until the present day. Because the Endless surviving the firing of the Array jeopardised the foreigners' intended plans for the mantle of responsibility to pass to humanity. As a, as a Halo lore YouTuber, that's, that's what I'm known for. This, this is my bread and butter. As a Halo lore YouTuber, I had, I think, true of us all, we all had immensely high hopes for what Halo Infinite was going to be. 
You know, it seemed like 343 Industries were finally paying attention to what the fans were screaming out for, you know. We, there, there were huge problems with the art style changing, you know, we weren't we weren't happy with the, the new style of, of the cheap, well, personally I was okay with it, but, you know, I, I know, you know, that doesn't necessarily represent a trend, but there was fundamental changes and a return to form in the art style and, and, the, and the style of gameplay and the music and the cadence and the mystery of Halo. All of the, all of the trailers seemed to point towards the very real possibility that Halo Infinite was beckoning forward a new golden era for the Halo franchise and was we, we were going to one of the most lore-steeped locations in the galaxy. The, the ramifications for that, the possibilities that could have been explored were just, it, even now, it blows my mind how much could have been explored and yet how little was actually brought forward. I'm a Halo lore YouTuber and Halo Infinite gave me nothing. It gave me the Xalanin. I don't... I, I enjoyed playing it, that's the thing. I enjoyed playing Halo Infinite, but I think the reason I enjoyed playing Halo Infinite is because I still enjoy playing Halo CE, and Halo Infinite is basically half of Halo CE. Yes, it did a few things new. Yeah, it made some interesting innovations and some, some appealing drives in certain directions. But then it just bailed out and didn't harness any of that lore and that potential in the soil of Zeta Halo. But the galaxy was pitched, it was set for a huge narrative to be able to be told. A true space opera like, like Halo used to be. We were, we were literally set up for the creme de la creme, the, the golden era of Halo to return, and nothing happened. Honestly, I genuinely entered this video, I, I, I wrote the script, I genuinely opened this video with the full intention of it just being a lore video about, about the Endless. But as I was physically recording the script, I realised as I was speaking, that we basically don't know anything about. I was going to go into theories on, you know, their origins and, and factor in the precursors and all this sort of stuff, but the more I thought about it, as I, I literally, as I was recording it, I was thinking, this isn't going to go anywhere. Why isn't this going to go anywhere? This is a whole new faction that's introduced into the Halo universe, and we know nothing. Why? And, and then it, like I say, it slapped me in the face. I know why. Because Halo Infinite did nothing. And I can't just not talk about it anymore. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you've probably noticed that a huge amount of the stuff that I cover here on my channel is old lore. It's old, old news. Yeah, I, I put my, my take on it. Yeah, I take, uh, take interesting ways around the narrative. Yeah, I explore certain aspects of the Hell Universe in extremely high detail because that's what I'm best known for. That's where I shine in, in, in my content creation. But it's all old lore. It's not new. And the reason being is because Halo Infinite gave us nothing new. It was lore light. Extremely lore light. And I can't just not talk about it anymore. I mean, really, if I make a video on the Xalanin, I've pretty much then done all new emergent lore of Halo Infinite. That's that's Halo Infinite basically chalked up and done for me then. Again, I, st I still enjoyed playing it. I, st I still enjoy playing it. I still enjoy the multiplayer. But if I make a video, if I make a full lore video, <laughs> I technically already have at the start of this video, on the Xalanin, that's Halo Infinite done. Then I'm just, again, I'm back to old lore. I'm, I'm back to doing, you know, the Banished, or I'm, I'm back to doing ship breakdowns, or, or whatever. But it's because that's where all of the lore and substance is at the moment. That shouldn't be happening. We're over 20 years into this franchise, and I'm, I'm covering lore that was, that was first brought forward nearly 20 years ago. And I think what really, really, really upsets me is that, again, there was so much potential and it wasn't really explored. But then there was at least, there was at least a glimmer of hope that perhaps there'd be campaign DLC that would expand it 
and 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 we'd be able to learn more about Zeta Halo. It'd become a, a place that we could have multiple subsequent campaigns take place, and we'd really better get to grips with the deep lore of just Zeta Halo and really focus in on just Zeta Halo. And then they laid off all of the campaign staff and basically cancelled campaign DLC and are now exclusively focusing on multiplayer. And to be fair, I know that this video really is just a rant, that's all it is, because I mean it's 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 not going to fix anything. Even even if this this video goes viral and it it draws huge attention from uh, from Microsoft and from from 343 Industries and and god knows what else. Even if this video went huge, there is no one currently working on campaign as far as we're aware. So even if this did this video drew huge attention, even if Microsoft or 343 Industries responded to that right now and started kicking into action a plan to bring new campaign DLC, that's at minimum three years away. We're in a worse state now than we were after the Halo 5 Guardians lore drought. Because after, after six years of lore drought, what do we get? Half of Halo CE and the introduction of a new species that we know nothing about. That's it. This was a much more emotionally charged video than I intended it to be. But it's not without reason. I think true of us all, in the grand scheme of things, it's just I love Halo. I truly, truly love Halo, and it's it's got so much potential. And we've seen it have so much potential. We've seen it literally dominate the games market. And now we're here. The first step to fixing a problem is admitting there is one, right? As if we didn't know that already. On the off chance that this does find its way to people within 343 or, you know, decision makers higher up, I can see the, the, the good effort that's being made towards Halo... Halo Infinite's multiplayer specifically at the moment because that's seemingly all that's being worked on at the moment and I do appreciate that and the community appreciates that. Uh, Halo Infinite and the Master Chief Collection is in a better state now than it's been in for a very, very, very long time. But Halo's always been campaign first. This, this rant of a video comes from a place of love, not from a place of anger. I just, I want Halo to do so well. True of us all, we all want Halo to do well. There is a huge amount of potential and it's being squandered. I know there's no quick fix. We all know there's no quick fix. Because even if a campaign was started right now, it would be years until we see it. But please, no matter what you've got in store, no matter what your plans are, no matter what engine this game is running on, use its potential. We can take mature stories. We can take more deep narrative. We can take deep mysteries. Just please give us Halo as it was originally intended. Well, that was pretty intense. Rant video over. Normal content will resume thereafter. <laughs> uh. Thanks for watching. If I could respectfully ask, if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed, and if not, it's not a problem. And be sure to pop a comment below to throw me an idea on what you want to see next. Massive thanks to my awesome patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Prophet, Leon, Sylphia, Mikhail, and Irrefutable, the monitors of the array, Darian, Flaming Halo, Cameron, Spartan0137, the Cave Potato, Andrew, Shia, Dakota, and Ghost, my diligent sub-monitors, my fleet of Stratosentinels, and my loyal enforcers, and all other patrons who have supported the channel and helped keep the domain operational. Huge props and recognition to Todd Morrison, Spartan137, Wesley Stuckey, and Jacob Kemp for jumping on as Tier 0 Transcentient YouTube members. You guys are epic. Shout out to John for reasons. And if you want to help support the channel and score yourself tons of perks and merch, head over to Patreon or consider becoming a YouTube member. Links, as ever, are in the description. Much love. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>